Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordant. We are back for some more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. We are, well, a little bit below, b before halfway on the Market Square. Uh, we cleared this entire region. We did not pick up Ember. I will only pick it up later for some more experience gains. And we are now on this side after building this makeshift bridge. So, we're not gonna go here yet. We're gonna go left as there are some interesting Ooh, things happening side. here and also have some fights. Now, for this section, I will buff with Delay Poison Communal, because there are going to be several enemies that, that do apply poison here, and also uh, cast Sinking Cloud. So, this is why we purchased the scrolls. We're going to use one of these right now. That's basically all we need. We have Mage Armor and Bard Skin on the people that matter. We have Delay Poison on everybody, so we are fine to go. Yet another obstacle. We're gonna find these fiendish giant flies and giant centipedes. This is why I have delay poison, because they can poison. And we will just murder everything without too much of a bother, I think. And honestly, for this style of enemies, I don't really need to use my sword. I could just use the glaive, but it's not that necessary, I would say. So I won't worry about that too much. Ow. A disease, which is not cool. So, let's read about the diseases. My character Cordon became diseased, afflicted with the condition Demon Plague. It is a common kind of malign condition. Most diseases only harm you once a day, but can go on almost indefinitely until cured. You can become diseased because of an enemy's ability, or a spell, or sometimes a trap. Most diseases damage your ability score, so before curing the damage, make sure to get rid of the disease. You can cure disease with spells, or spell scrolls, such as remove disease or heal. From third level on, paladins become immune to diseases, throw them against infectious enemies and fear nothing. <coughs> Again, another advantage of having a paladin in the party, you can also use them for this, or don't have to bother with diseases. Now, we have this effect. Uh, it has still not um, drained us of anything. I don't believe I have cure disease spells with me. Let me just make sure, actually. We have Remove Sickness, which just um, mitigates the effect, doesn't remove it. So yeah, we have nothing to remove it right now, with the exception of Treat Affliction. Now, since it's not doing anything to us right now, I will just keep on going, honestly. And later on we can uh, bother about, or worry about, Make fixing way. that. Did Some more centipedes over here. Yeah. I actually am also curious, by the way, <clears throat> because I always like seeing this. When I have a lot of AC, I like seeing how I'm actually getting hit. Um, yeah, there we go. Natural 20. So, <clears throat> this is the bane of, <laughs> of Last of Lanty runs. Uh, right, at least until we have last, last 10, which we'll go into uh, a little bit later. Uh, we have 31 AC, the enemy can only hit us on a 20, but they do roll 20s every now and then. So, there you are. 20 roll, hit, applies disease. Which sucks. But again, it's not, it's not that much of a, of a big issue, honestly. <clears throat> Pick up some loots. Ugh. We're gonna meet some people over here, I believe. Yes, indeed. Ramian, my beloved brother, I admire your zeal, of course, but would you not agree this is hardly the time to be standing guard over a hole that no one will ever emerge from? Or perhaps you're concerned that someone will decide to go for a nighttime stroll and will accidentally fall into it? Such foresight is laudable, but do you really need so many soldiers for such a task? Can't your warriors be put to better use, for instance, fighting demons or clearing rubble while the people trapped beneath it might still be alive? The demons still haven't entirely broken through the defenses of Canabras, but time is running out. So another warning that you don't want to waste a lot of time um, <clears throat> before you deal with certain events. One of those events we're going to see in this section. The face of this golden curled Azimar is beautiful even by the standards of his kind, in whose veins run the blood of angels. His melodious voice sounds cheerful, but bitter reproach simmers in his gaze. Don't you dare call me brother heretic! 
The signs of recent hard fighting are obvious in this stern old man. His armor is dented and covered in blood and his unnatural pallor suggests something more dangerous than wounds inflicted by claws and fangs. Nevertheless, his gaze is stony and his voice accustomed to barking orders is harsh and clipped. We've met this guy before. How dare you accuse me of doing nothing to protect this city, especially now when followers of your temple were caught committing treason. To my mind, you are no different than the demon worshippers, those miscreants, those beasts that are digging under the city walls. Everyone knows, my dearest prelate, that in your zealous pursuit of order in the city, you have long since forgotten how to tell friend from foe and good from evil. That's what happened with my adepts, whose act of treason was a genuine attempt to save the city. And yet again, I am forced to repeat myself. While we are wasting time on pointless quarrels, people are dying under the rubble in our city. People whom we could have saved if you had only set your soldiers to the task and not kept them here, surrounding a useless and utterly harmless hole in the ground. Harmless? Well, if it's on your say-so, then that must mean there is something down there. Your associates, no doubt. And they're just waiting for us to abandon our post before they slink out and try again to... The old man notices your approach. And you. I remember you. You appeared in my city the day the demons attacked and Terendal have died. What are you doing here? Enter at once or I'll have you strung up by your ankles before you know it. Don't think that the demons have wounded me. I still have enough strength to take on a hundred of your sort. Very aggressive guy. And what is this hideous creature? Holren peers at Lan with suspicion. Lan, at your service. The mongrel ducks his head in a bow. My forebears fought in the First Crusade. I have lived in Canabras my whole life. You haven't even ever seen me before? Ah, it must be because you don't ever venture into our underground district. We have been meaning to complain to the city authorities that our paving stones have been in need of repair for a long time. The First Crusade? So, you're a mongrel? <laughs> you obviously know human speech, surprisingly well, in fact. Alright, let's be off with you. The prelate looks at you. If he causes any trouble, I shall hold you responsible. Come to think of it, you still haven't told me who you are. I am a crusader. I am fighting to liberate cadavers from demons. A crusader, you say? Ha! I'll be looking into that. You obviously don't know to whom you are speaking. I am the one who decides who's a crusader and who's a traitor in this city. Hulrun Shapok. Prelate of Canabras by the grace of Her Majesty Queen Golfrey, and the city's defender against threats from within and without. So, this guy... Canabras' famed prelate Holron Shapok first gained the trust and admiration of city's people by organizing inquisitions against suspected demon worshippers and witches. Holron and his force of elite witch hunters exposed dozens of cultists and spies, and, it is said, executed many more under suspicion but with no real proof. These events started the Third Crusade, widely accepted as the least effective and most self-destructive of the Four Crusades. Still, Holron evoked respect and admiration in the populace as well as fear, and agreed to guide the city of this prelate. And as we can see, you've done a sterling job protecting the city. The golden curled Azamar flashes a flinty smile. I am Ramian of Edme, prior of the Temple of Desna, which, alas, currently lies in ruins. Wise Ulrun here believes it is vital to guard this hole in the ground from which he is certain demons will emerge at any moment. I have been trying to convince him that the city has far more urgent matters to deal with. For instance, rescuing those currently dying under the rubble. You know what? There may in fact be one matter that is more important than guarding this hole. I've put it off and put it off and look where it's led us. I should have had you hung from the gates back when you dared to defend your gang of delinquent demon collaborators. If the Sarkori Sarkorians are hanged, Arilu Vorlesh while they... Uh, sorry. Had hanged Arilu Vorlesh while they had the chance, there never would have been a war. I won't repeat that mistake. I won't hesitate any longer. Soldiers, seize this scum. Prelate, see reason. These are frightening times, but threatening to hang someone without trial, that is unworthy of a servant of Iomade. The old man fixes his eyes on Sila. Lest you forget, girl, we may serve the same goddess, but you are not an inquisitor. Don't question the way I choose to serve Iomade, and I won't question yours. What exactly are you accusing Ramion of, inquisitor? Treason. Not long before the city was attacked, several followers from his temple tried to secretly access the wardstone and perform an unknown ritual over it. Holrun is trembling with fury. The Wardson of Canabres, the gift from Iomade the Bringer of Light, wrought by the hands of her herald, the first in the chain. And followers of that crazy runt of a goddess tried to meddle with it using their magic after hearing a voice in their dreams. My soldiers almost had them caught when Ramian got in the way, allowing the traitors to go to ground. I made a mistake. I didn't have him locked up in a cell and interrogated to within an inch of his life. And now the city lies in ruins. It's time to rectify that mistake. I have told you before and I'll tell you again. My people foresaw the attack on the city, they knew the Warson already carried the seed of corruption within itself and they were simply trying to heal it. 
I have heard similar claims before. Now, now, where was it? Ah, yes, from Staunton Vane, the traitor who brought down Dresden. The lessons of the past have taught us a great deal, and that is why I never believed you or your mob's lies even for a second. And I was right. So, we're gonna use the Angel Mythic path here by <clears throat> revealing the light of heaven. Behold, Inquisitor, I bear the gift of an angel who died in the caves below Canabras. I am no enemy of yours. The old man frowns and whispers something. A prayer or a spell? With each word his face relaxes. You are telling the truth. The light in your hands was wrought by the power of heaven. I will keep an open mind in regard to you, stranger. And later, under less fractious circumstances, I would like to ask you about how you came to receive this gift. But that can wait. Now I must deal with this filth once and for all. Uh, so you can go for lawful. You're doing what's right, Holren. There's no place in the crusade for troublemakers. I don't like that option. Uh, or we can say chaotic, don't lay a finger on him, or he'll have to answer to me. Maybe saying nothing will also have the same result as this one, but since I'm not sure, I'll just go for this one. The Azimar holds up his hands in a placating gesture. Stop! You are the defenders of what remains of Canabras. Can't you think of anything better to do than be at each other's throats in the ruins of the city? Ramian looks at the prelate. You are a fool, Holren. You are a zealot and a murderer. But you are a fool first and foremost. I told you the war that the war zone was weakened. You wouldn't listen. I warned you that the city was, being t was going to be attacked. You shooed me away. The truth is that my young adepts were trying to save the war zone and you stopped them. Of course, those truly responsible for this tragedy are the demons, but you have done nothing to prevent it. And now you would still rather kill an innocent person and perish yourself than admit that you were wrong, as always. With the wave of his hand, the Azimar vanishes. Nyam, 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 nyam. I'm angry. <laughs> he fled, the heretic. He's no doubt expecting me to rush off in pursuit, but that won't work on me. Halrun turns attention to you. What about you? If you truly have been marked out for a gift from heaven, this is your chance to save the city. Go and bring back that filthy traitor. I am almost certain that he and his cronies are helping the demons, either knowingly or unknowingly. Their attempt to bewitch the warstone is clear proof. Ramian must be captured. I see you suffer greatly in battle. Nonsense. I had to deal with the brood of Nabasus. It was nothing. I have taken on worse enemies with the goddess's help. Really? I don't think you would last in front of a Nabasu, but okay. Nabasus, also known as Death Demons, have the ability to drain their victim's life force. Judging by Holron's power, he has lost a significant amount of his energy. The Inquisitor can bluster as much as he wants, but right now he's far from the peak of his abilities. Okay, I guess he did fight one. <clears throat> Why are you obsessed with finding enemies everywhere you look? Why? Why? You must not be from these parts, or you wouldn't have asked such a question. I look for enemies everywhere because our enemies are everywhere. Who are we at war with? Demons. Demons and cultists. They are masters of deception. They worm their way into your favor and masquerade in all manner of false guises. Do you think Dresden was taken by force? No, by trickery. Were it not for me, Canabras would have gone the same way long ago, captured out from under our noses. Now listen to what I'm about to tell you. This was a long time ago. I was very young then and I had just joined the crusade. Back then, Canabras didn't have a garrison so much as a public thoroughfare. Anyone who wanted could just stroll into the city. One day at dawn, a group of refugees came up to the city gates, bold as brass. The guards let them in. And why not? For no one was ever turned away. Twas no matter. Everyone was welcome in our city. If you came from Mendev, or if you hauled yourself here from across the seas, the crusade accepted all and sundry. But on this occasion, we paid dearly for our laxity. Just as soon as these innocent lambs entered the city, transformed into de it transformed into demons and rushed towards the wardstone, slaughtering everyone who tried to stop them. 62 people died in less than a minute. The, the demons used their mutilated corpses to desecrate the obelisk. None of them dared to go near it. The light of the goddess burned them all, so they threw the blood from afar, spattering the wardstone from every direction. And the, lead, and the lead demon, an eyeless beast, Minago is her name, jeered and gloated, saying we mortals had been sitting ducks. And the creature was right too. We let our guard down, and we got what we deserved. That bloodbath came to be known as the Red Morning Massacre, and it was burned into the townsfolk's memories. Since then, Canabras has adopted different practices. Heretics, cultists, spies, all the rebel who coveted Harila's glory, we drove them all out of the city. We haven't had any trouble here since. Many have come here, even the Balor Korazmade, and they have all been sent straight back to where they came from, or else they were killed for their trouble. You see, Descari himself had to crawl out of the abyss and come here, the goddess curse him, in order to break through our defenses. 
And what they do, he left again. And we're still fighting. Now that is what vigilance and discipline can do. Did Raymond really warn you about the attack? Those crazed desnans were always bursting into my study with their incoherent prophecies that came to them in their dreams. I won't lie, sometimes what they said did come to pass, but can we really rely on the woolly dreams of heretics over the cold hard facts of intelligence reports? Plenty of demons could have easily fooled them and whispered a treasonous plan in their dreams, and those lunatics would have been only too happy to listen. I, I mean, he does have somewhat of a point, but he's kind of... <coughs> a little bit on the extreme side. This time, Mr. Curls for Brains came to me and declared that demons were about to attack the city and that the Wardstone's power was diminished by some kind of contamination or taint. Ioma Day forgive me for even repeating the words. After uttering such blasphemy, he should have been locked up along with his followers and interrogated. But instead, I simply increased the surveillance on them. And what next? My people caught them red-handed trying to attack the Wardstone with a known magic. And not three days later, the demons attacked the city. There's an obvious connection between these events. Whether deliberately or under demonic influence, the Dezans played right into the hands of Descari's hordes and they almost left the city completely defenseless. Ramian covered for his people the whole time and helped them escape my guards. After that, what else can he be but a traitor and a heretic? There's nothing dangerous in this hole, you have no reason to guard it. You told me yourself that you received a light bringing gift from an angel who perished in the caves below our feet. It is no secret that those passages are teeming with dangerous creatures that kill anyone, even a warrior of heaven. Demons and demonic offspring love roaming about underground. That's why I will be keeping an eye on this hole. If the beasts decide to attack from here, we'll be ready for them. Where can I find Ramian? How should I know? The weasel can't have gone far. He turned invisible. He's probably hunkered down in some hole like the traitorous little rat he is. And he'll be sitting, trembling and waiting till he's dragged out of there. Okay. So, we can kill them, but I won't be doing that. I have to go. Go on then if you have to. It would be good if you could return with the head of that scum. And naturally, we got a quest to kill Ramian. But just because you got a quest saying kill somebody, you don't have to complete it. Right? You don't have to blindly do this. You can see if there are other options. As we follow along, much we find a shiny little thing over here. The demon invasion transformed all of Canabras into one great battlefield, but nowhere in the city suffered as much as this square. This place saw a clash of titans, the demon lord Descari leading his horse from the abyss, and the dragon Terendelev, the mightiest of the city's defenders and one of the first to fall. The scene of destruction leaves no doubt as to the battle's outcome. A skilled scout could recreate the, the course of the battle moment by moment simply by looking at the ruins. From the chimneys torn down by powerful wings in a sharp dive, to the bloody tracks left behind when the demon dragged away the noble reptile's broken body. But it is no hypothetical scout gazing upon the ruins, it is cordoned, and he is not alone. The shadow of a strange, barely perceptible presence lingers over this place. Like a gaze untethered from any observer, this mysterious force unknown to mortal kind silently accesses, judges and seeks a better way. In an instant, Cordant is vested with this power and looks at the world with its eyes. The past, present and future stand before him as, an, as a unified whole, an unmoving, multifaceted crystal that would be beautiful were it not for the fractures, blemishes and flecks marring its splendor. What past does he see? Okay, we see here Mr. Descari and apparently a wizard of some sort. In the past exists the one who wielded this gaze in life. Although the one and life are in a, in a positive terms for eons, the supernatural embodiments of cosmic balance. So eons, beyond passion, beyond mercy, beyond reason, the faceless caretakers of reality toil without end, silently struggling to preserve the tenuous balance upon which all existence depends. These voiceless forces are the eons, inscrutable shapers and eliminators of the multiverse. They exist beyond the understanding of most mortals, endlessly striving towards, toward goals unfathomable even to many of the plane's oldest inhabitants. Eons build order from the chaos of the maelstrom, seek new life upon barren worlds and halt the rampages of forces grown overbold. They rend nations to vapor, dismantle planets into cosmic dust and pave the way for calamities. Eons embody the plane spanning hand of a metaphorical omnipotent clockmaker, endlessly tuning and adjusting the myriad gears of reality in pursuit of ultimate perfection. Now, I'm reading this because this is one of the mythic paths available, so I think it's, it's worth having a little bit of information and lore about what they are. 
Uh, rather than who or what, a better word for these entities is how. This Aeon appeared from outside this world, from the great beyond, to put an end to the intermingling of the planes and destroy the world wound, the chasm disrupting the order of the multiverse. Alas, the visitor from beyond proved too weak for the battle they came to fight. They even failed to finish casting the spell that would have sent Eskari back to the abyss. With one swing of his scythe, the demon lord cut the Aeon down. The Great Beyond being a term that encompasses all the planes of existence that make up the known multiverse. These realities beyond our reality are the domains of the gods and are home to non-godly powers fit for worship, planet dragons and entirely alien races. What present do we see? Ruins, blood, corpses. None of this perturbs the Aeon's dispassionate gaze. The living are alive, the dead will be judged by Phrasma. And all, uh, all is as it should be, the goddess of death. But the demons circling in the sky are, uh, or prowling through the streets create a jarring just a position, like splashes of blood red ink on a restrained pencil sketch. They should not be here. The world of mortals is for mortals, the demons places in the demon world. How sublime the world would be if everything it, in it knew its place. But even the demons aren't as abhorrent as the sharp edged, uh, uh, as the sharp edged, unassuming crystal languishing in the dirt among the bricks and smashed cobblestones. No mortal would notice it, but to the Aeon's eyes its mere existence is an outrage against um, universal laws. If the Aeon still existed, they would not stop until the crystal was unmade. But the Aeon is gone, and only their gaze remains. Cordon picks the crystal up out of the dirt and stows it, stows it in his pocket. He is mortal, which means he has the power to decide what to do with it. And we got a very important item, the purple stone knife. What future does he see? Good and evil, chaos and order. Everything in its lawful place in the multiverse and is no longer trespassing where it does not belong. Nothing is disrupting the smooth and steady current of the river of souls from life into death and back to life again. The reality, rid of its flaws, is now perfect, and the eons withdraw to eternally admire its beauty, which will never be threatened again. After allowing the hero to view the world through their eyes, the little that remained of, it, of the destroyed eon is killed, even in appropriate appropriate here for an entity that is so removed from life and death as we understand them, used up its last fetches of energy. Now they are ready to disperse into nothingness unless someone decides to preserve the Eon within themselves. Will the hero take on this power so that he may again look at the world through another's eyes, or will he allow it to vanish? And I'm not really sure what happens if you say no to this, maybe you just lock yourself out of the Eon mythic path. I'm just gonna pick this one just because. It doesn't lock us into anything anyway. Retain the Eon's power within yourself. The spirit of the Eon dwells out of sight, deep in Cordum's soul, like a pair of magical spectacles towed away until the moment when the hero once again needs to look at the world through another's eyes. And there we go. Something else to... Ah, we have some enemies here as well, Follow that's me. right. Now for these enemies they have some dredges which cast Stinking Cloud, but we now have Delay Poison, so we're fine against that. But they mind? also cast I Cause wonder. Fear, and oh, for that, yeah. I am gonna get a Remove Fear here, so that we are better prepared for the fight. Um, do I want to get Enlarge Person? I suppose I can. There's no real reason not to. Stay on your toes. I don't need anyone's sympathy. We're gonna get this, and we're gonna move in. Now these um. What do you call this? These benches, I guess, these long benches, uh, are kind of in the way of the enemy, so we you cannot actually charge them. War. So we simply go in and just smack them the, the regular way, I suppose. My blade. And in terms of priority, I would prefer to kill the cleric Samir first, there. if I can reach him. Another one over there. Flame blade, I think, is mostly are we fine. In yet? Doubt is uh, the but I want you... Challenge. Why can't I shift-click you? Well, what? I will not be trifled You can with. trust me. Now it works. I don't know. Sometimes this game is You've a little bit weird. The wrong yeah, you see right here, cause fear. That's why we have the remove fear. To try and protect a little bit more. It doesn't guarantee, but it does help out a bit. Now, one of the good things about having delay poison as well is that if you jump into the midst of your enemies. The Dretches don't really care about friendly fire, so they might actually disable 
a bunch of this group of enemies while we ourselves are immune to it. So let's see if that actually happens. It would be a good thing to... God damn. Okay. Good job, I guess. Uh, kill that one. Uh, I'm just hoping that this guy doesn't go for the backline here. Yeah, but this is why I want to kill the clerics first because of this stupid effect. Okay, kill that one. And that guy is casting fear. Uh, we're going to deal with this fighter and then go for that one as well. Okay, where is he going? Fine. Dude, where are you guys casting the stinking cloud? The stinking cloud disappeared. No glory without risk. Something tells me that the recent patches have been doing something very strange this game. A lot of weird interactions of late. Oh. Ah, come on, this guy has a lot of AC, doesn't he? 18. It's not a lot, but... Okay. That should be better. Uh, I want my range to focus on the next more dangerous enemy, which should be the Flame Blade. So aim for him. Uh, I'm also going to curse him, by the way. And you two... Into go for him play. as well. He saved against this. I'm going to reapply it. I won't go down this easy. Roll the 19. <clears throat> which is exactly what he needed to hit me. Okay. Again, let's not panic. There's no reason to panic here. Uh, he needs to roll another 19 to actually hit me. So I won't be too bothered by this. Although... It doesn't hurt to drink a potion. So let's do that. Okay. Feel a little bit better. And let me see. Do you have evil eye? Yeah, okay. So you failed the save now. Good. Go for their I'll actually help out some magic missiles because this guy is taking a little bit too long to die. For my taste. And I will also have protective luck placed on my main character, so to be hit, he needs to roll 19 twice. Come on, dude, you can kill him. There you go, Jesus. Took way too long. Uh, you guys aim for the one with the glaive. Dead. And there we go. So yeah, we have options, we don't have to panic if our life gets a little bit low, we have protective luck, we have the wand of healing, we have healing potions, so it's oh, not no, that bad. Don't care. In any case, let's actually heal worst. up, because a lot of our characters took some damage. You always roll so high. <laughs> Dude, aren't you supposed to heal for 1d6? 1d6 points of damage plus 1d6 for uh, for every two cleric levels. We're only level one, that's true. But 1d6, we rolled a two twice. Rely on me. <sighs> okay, so I want my main tanks to actually be kind of healthy here. So let's drink some potions. Should have actually used my scrolls. I kind of forgot about that. That's my bad. And what we have here is nothing too special. Ooh, resist acid. That would be useful. It's hard to believe that this place recently held a bursting and festive market. You also find this item right here, this arrow that's shining red. And if you remember, from the initial cutscene of the game, when you shoot this Kari with your crossbow, you do see like a red glow around your bolt. It is important for, uh, for story reasons later on. This is called the Midnight Bolt. The owner of this bolt can shoot it to deal 50 points of damage that cannot be ignored or reduced. This bolt cannot miss. So, these bolts are actually used for the secret ending in this game. Which, again, I don't think it's something I'm gonna go for. Because going for the secret ending is annoying, it's very convoluted, and... Generally speaking, I don't care too much about it. <laughs> How much longer um, but if you do want to go for the secret ending, uh, you need to pick up something. all of the midnight bolts and use them in the proper places. 
Uh, and I, I guess I can mention those as we go, in case somebody does want to go for the secret ending. So you will know where you have to use them. Judging by the size of the blood stain, the body of something truly enormous was dragged over these stones. Trendelev, most likely. Follow me! Or don't. Here we meet Count Arende's servant. Uh, thank the gods, I found someone who isn't fleeing in a panic. Are you crusaders? Mercenaries? The comely half-elf is so frightened he can barely get the words out. I am a servant of Count Dayden, Kale Neves Arende. My lord's mansion is under attack by demons. The master himself and all his guests are trapped inside. And the house guards are nowhere to be found. I managed to escape through a servant's passage to look for help. Will you help me? The mansion is only a stone's throw away, on the next street over. He meets your gaze with pleading eyes. Count Arende. I have seen him a few times before. From afar, he looked highly audacious. I confess that he did capture my attention. But that's neither here nor there. We should help him. The gratitude of a rich and influential man can only benefit us. Good. You have heard about the Arande family before. This wealthy and noble Mandavian dynasty was almost wiped out by demons more than 10 years ago. The last surviving member of the family, the young Count Dayron, has an infamous reputation. He is well known for being a rake and a rogue. Misfortune continues to dog the house of Arande, I see. The servant cringes. You are telling me. Everyone tried to talk me out of taking up the position, saying that it can't have just been bad luck that brought tragedy down on the family and almost killed off the line. But I, reason but I reasoned that since my master was the only one to survive the calamity, that meant he must be blessed by fate and the powers of good. The pay was nothing to sniff at either. The servant cast his eyes around the street. I should have listened to people smarter than me and gone to work somewhere else, preferably far away from Canabres. Tell me more about what happened. I'll tell you what I can. I was working from dusk till dawn and back to dusk again, serving guests at the Count's banquet. When the other servants came to relieve me at my post, I went to sleep. Next thing I know, I wake up and there are demons inside the mansion. I couldn't even reach the Count. The monsters had blocked the way. The Count's banquet was still going on, he and his guests were in the Great Hall, and as far as I could tell, the door to the room was sealed and the demons couldn't get in. I am begging you, hurry. The mansion's doors are sturdily built, but demons will have to work uh, the demons will have to work hard to get past them, so you still have time to rescue the people inside. Alright, I will help. Where is your master's home? It's not far at all. You are better off entering from the next street over, though the passage uh, through the passage I used to get out. Help! I'm begging you. I hate to think what the count will do to me if I don't bring back help. And we revealed Arende Party House. It will be relevant, because we can get an additional um, companion there. But we will not be rushing there just yet. We're going to check out this area. Holds nothing special. But this area does hold something special. Hear me! Take heed! The hordes of the Abyss march on Canabris. The Warzone is their target. They must not be allowed to capture it. The consequences will be disastrous. I have to read that quickly because it doesn't give me a lot of time to read. And here we find Ramian. So, in case anybody is looking for this guy, he is standing hidden over here. Ramian. Let's talk to him. The golden curled Azimar greets you with a graceful bow. So you found me. I have nowhere else to run. I am at your mercy. Kill me if you wish, but I ask you, hear me out first. Did you really know about the demon attack before it happened? I did. We have a secret ally in the enemy's ranks. No one knows who this brave soul is, but she has been feeding us information about the demon's plans. These dispatches have come to us by the most reliable channel bestowed upon us by the Great Dreamer herself. Great Dreamers? Uh, okay, it's Desna. They have come to us in dreams. Prelate Hulrun brushed them off as meaningless re reveries. And, well, I admit that it isn't always easy to distinguish our allies' messages from ordinary dreams. But even ordinary dreams are gifts from Desna and are always worthy of attention. The Prelate, and all the Crusade leaders for that matter, should have put less store in reason and more in intuition, inspiration and spontaneity. Uh, not sure if I agree. What's more, not long before the attack on the city, a blind elf who calls himself the Storyteller arrived in Canabres. Now this I would put some faith in. This wanderer wasn't merely a collector of legends, but a scholar of the unknown. According to him, the wardstone in our city, the first and most important in the chain of wardstones, weakened since long ago, long ago, was teetering on the brink of corruption. 
It seems that the Red Morning Massacre and the other demon attacks, even the ones we fended off, did not leave us unscathed. Unfortunately, the prelate did not wish to listen to the storyteller either. We're lucky he wasn't burned at the stake as a heretic. We, we had such vital information on our hands, information that could have saved the city, but no one cared to listen all the way to the catastrophic end. Yeah, not all dreams have benign origins. What if those dreams have been sent by demons? In a different time and place, someone perhaps could have become the victim of false dreams sent by monsters. But here, in the war with the Abyss, the goddess is keeping a close eye on her most faithful followers. I have no doubt that if a demon tried to intrude upon the dreams of any of us, Desna's punishment would have been swift. Tell me about the strange rituals that were going to be performed on the ward zone. Raymond looks slightly abashed. When my attempts to open Ulrun's eyes ended in failure, a few of my young adepts re resolved to take matters into their own hands. They did not consult me before doing so, but I have never demanded iron discipline from my priests. Army commanders may have subordinates, but I have pupils and fellow worshippers. I can only inspire them, I cannot command them. And it seems they were inspired all on their own. In other words, you get to preach whatever you want and you don't have to take any responsibility for your flock. You've really got it made. Yeah, well, there's some truth to that. For pity's sake, how can I be held responsible for the actions of others? These are not children we are discussing here. They are grown adults endowed with their own free will, praise the goddess. Of course, we all help one another, but in the final reckoning, each of us decides how we will act, and each must answer for those choices. They had no ill intent. They only wished to access the war zone in secret and try to cleanse it. But to Ulrun, this became perform a suspect ritual after hearing even more suspect voices in their dreams. The children wanted to save their city, but the Inquisitors detained them and almost killed them. I had to intervene. I used my authority and my power as a cleric to give them a chance to flee. If they hadn't got away, they were destined for a cell in the Prelate Dungeons and quite likely death. Why are you and Ulrun feuding? Oh, I'm not feuding with him. I sincerely wish only the best for the man. In an ideal world, he'd be far away from the front lines enjoying a peaceful retirement. But even if that isn't possible, I have always tried to help him fulfill the mission he has taken upon himself, and to which he has proved fatally ill-suited, protecting cannabis against the demons. Unfortunately, he is convinced that the followers of Desna are heretics and saboteurs. He refused to listen to me, and it was only the knightly orders that deterred him from including us in this witch hunt. Now there, is clearly no one, uh, now, there is clearly no one left to stand in his way. He is finally free to get rid of us once and for all. So you can try, you can kill him. Uh, sorry, you can suggest killing Hulrun. You can kill this guy. Or we can ask, is there a chance you can resolve your conflict? I don't know. Hulrun's fate is truly formidable. Not only is fate in Iomade, but in his own inf infallibility. In other words, he's as hard-headed as a rock troll. <laughs> but even so, Desna teaches us never to lose hope. Talk to him. Try to explain that we are fighting on the same side. If he attacks you, disarm him, bind his hands, but I beg you, if at all possible, please do not kill him. Why haven't you left this place for somewhere safer? Because people might need help, and they will come to the temple in search of a priest. I will not hide away in a hole, saving my own neck, while Canabras is full of people suffering in the wake of the demon's attack. Okay, I have to go. Wait, three of my adepts are hiding somewhere in the ruins of the city. The ones the Inquisitors wrongly accused of treason. I beg you, find them and protect them against the demons, and vigilantes like Hulrun. They will not rest until they find them. If there's anything else you can do to save Canabres, please do it. We're also gonna meet someone else right now. Ilks. Stranger, wait! You spared Ramian despite what that mad Inquisitor told you. The young voice comes from nowhere. Oh, hang on, I forgot to remove the spell. I hope Hulrun's dogs aren't lurking nearby. A pale youth materializes before you. His face looks haggard from lack of speak, uh, sleep, but he is clearly pleased to be speaking to someone. So you're one of the Desna adepts who tried to break into the Warzone? Huh? Yes, I am Ilks, cleric of Desna, and one of the people who answered the call of the voice in dreams. Some unknown person made contact with us through our dreams, telling us about the demon's plans. We learned that the demons were planning to attack Canabras and do something terrible to our Warzone, which already carries the taint of corruption. Prelate Holren refused to heed our warnings. We had to make a choice. We could either throw up our hands and pull back, or take action, even though it could cost us our lives. But what heartless person could stand in the face of such a deadly, deadly threat? What were you planning to do with the Wardstone? The young man hesitates. Our plan was to get to it and then follow our instincts. There were three of us, a cleric, a mage and a bard. Uh, between us we know a lot, we're capable of a great deal. If we'd had enough time, I'm sure we could have figured out what's wrong with the Wardstone and how to heal it, but they didn't give us time. 
Yes, the local commanders got roped into dealing with this. Some idiot kids trying to break into the war zone, apparently some of ours, but who even knows these days? Silla sighs. I know there's no evil in you, I can sense things like that. But what you did was so stupid and impulsive, someone could have got hurt. I know from experience. So you lot decided that you needed to do something right away, so you did something right away. Great work. <laughs> Land gives a sarcastic round of applause. How did you even come up with such a plan? How could we not come up with that plan? You sense the young man's temper rising. Listen, Desna is the goddess of luck. But luck, as many lay people would understand it, and luck as we, the followers of the music of the spheres, see it, are far from the same thing. Other people believe that luck is something good that falls into your lap just because, like a generous but unre unearned reward. We see luck as a fundamental law of creation, according to which, even in the darkest hour of the most hopeless situation, a chance of rescue and, cha and change for the better can arise. But you've got to size this chance when it presents itself, uh, sorry, sees, or better yet, create your own. Followers of Desna are not people who like idleness and inaction. That's why when Canabras was in trouble, we did as our goddess had taught us. We took the matter into our own hands and tried to, in a moment of desperation to pluck our chance from the hands of fate itself. So what, you went up against Holren, but he's the official governor of the city. I guess we can say this. What of it? says the cleric with remarkable complacency. Submitting to unworthy leaders is one of the great ills of our civilization. We will never defeat the demons if we keep listening to people like Holren. Whose voice have you been hearing in your dreams? Nobody knows what it is, but everyone who has heard it, heard her, I should say, is convinced that she is a good and pure soul chosen by Desna. We had a choice. We could trust her, except that we have an ally somewhere who isn't afraid, uh, somewhere who isn't afraid of all the armies of the abyss, or we could drown in suspicions and get one step closer to becoming just like Holron. We decided to trust the voice. And seeing Canabra's devastated, which is what our unknown ally tried to prevent until the very end, I can see now who had the truth on their side. This person they're talking about will also be relevant in the future. Uh, where are your fellow worshippers and how many of them are there? Fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know where they are. We split up to confuse inquisitors who were chasing us. Do you need help? Desna teaches us to trust in last ditch chances. Listen, my friends are called Aranka and Thal, Thal the Wallflower. Aranka is an amazing singer and a truly beautiful girl. She has plenty of friends and fans, she's probably blend, blended into a crowd somewhere. Wallflower is a mage, but I don't think he'll risk using magic. It will only bring the Inquisitors down on him. He'll be harder to find. You'd better find Aranka first. She might know where Wallflower is. Please, find them and protect them against the demons and Inquisitors. I will await news in the Goddess's Temple. I hope our mysterious helper will send us a new message that will reveal what is to come from the demons. Okay, we have to go. May Desna be with you, stranger. So here we get another quest to find the adepts. And we will do that How much uh, longer relatively longer? soon, after we deal with the majority of the market square. First we're going to deal with these enemies here. And these guys can actually be annoying because they deal fire damage. They have some wizards over here and they cast Flaming Arc. I always have the upper hand. I don't I think I'm going to bother wasting of me, one of my protections from I. fire. Uh, because <laughs> I will definitely need them for anyway. something else later. I could use Fire Belly. It does give us a little bit of fire resistance, but I don't think it's that necessary. We have enough HP, I believe, to kind of work through this. Even if we have to kind of heal up afterwards. Oh, no. But you know what? I will never use Fire Belly. <laughs> I always forget about this, so might as well just use it. Can you even cast this? You can't. Okay, so Lan can cast it, I think. Meditate on your now, mistakes. Now, is this necessary? Oh, it's personal. Ah, uh, never mind. Never mind. Can't use it. Can't use it. I was about Follow to say me. it's not necessary, but it helps. Uh, we're gonna go the the not necessary route, I suppose. Together. So, let's Never charge who we can. Open and you three me. move up over the here. Guide me. I want to try and focus Save the wizard, the which is over there, the evoker, Cover me. as quickly as possible. Okay, good. I think I'm going to try something with Big Bird here. Oh, he's going for, flame, for Scorching Ray. That is less likely to hit. But it can still hit. I'm gonna try my flying attack here. See if he likes it. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, good. He died before being able to cast a single uh, flaming arc. Okay, <clears throat> looking good. And one thing I will also mention, by the way, and I, I do like this ability from the from the bird. You can kind of just charge even if you have somebody blocking your path. I do think this is useful for for dealing with this kind of situation. Uh, something I would advise in this area is you might not no want to use to the, the Marching Terror Glaive here. Because what's happened to me a lot of times is I hit somebody, it causes fear in the adjacent enemies, and they will run away, and they will get stuck inside this wall. It's very silly, but trust me, it does happen. So, I would advise against it. My instincts dull when I'm we tired. are heavily encumbered. We can just drop a couple of uh, armors here. Like this. And we can carry on. Now, where am I going actually? Oh yes! We can adopt Tiger over here. Mr. Kitty Cat. Uh, and this guy gives us a plus two morale bonus on perception and lore nature checks. So who has the highest perception right now? Eight, zero, eight, eight, eleven, and two. So you get the kitty cat to get some more mm -hmm. perception here. Pick up some loot. These people were not killed by demons, their mortal wounds were inflicted by ordinary weapons. Ugh. I'm guessing by the cultists. This is a large guy over here. Who are your friends? I think he also has some spellcasters in, in tow. I will help where I can. What? You are fatigued? How are you fatigued? Oh, we're all fatigued. I guess the time has, has come <laughs> for us to rest, actually. Uh, okay, I will still deal with these enemies regardless. Let me just back up. How much longer? I Since wonder... I'm going to have to rest after a little while, might as well use up my buffs here. I appreciate privacy. Whoa. Okay, so shield, enlarge person, uh, give us some bone shards, put this over there. And the bless doesn't hurt. And you can even go for divine favor. Okay, so again, we cannot charge them, so we just move in and attack them normally. Now, they do have some annoying enemies here, especially this, this Vermlek. The reason why I hate this guy so much is he casts um, Inflict Light Wounds Mass. Which means he's gonna attack with a spell in a very large AoE, dealing damage to everybody. And that can get very, very annoying very quickly because you don't really have a way to counter it. The only way to kind of work around it is, if somebody is able to get into melee with him, he will no longer cast his spell. He will just attack. So, I will be trying to do just that. So, I think I'm gonna actually have Mr. Big Bird try to fly on top of him. I will go for the Barbarians here. Like I'm gonna get protective luck on my main character because I'm gonna be getting hit by these two guys. Len, I'm gonna turn off point blank shot because I wanted to shoot from further away. Enjoy and let's start killing this. these wizards. And you can also start killing them by using magic of your own. Okay, that's a plan. Flying attack. Okay, awesome. Wow. Okay, crit, dead. <laughs> uh, uh, you are kind of getting a little bit too close to this. Oh. Go. Bitch. Oh, I, ha I have, I have um, shield, so I'm immune to it. <laughs> okay, so let's hit. Protective lock is on. Uh, I don't think I need one more, just attack. Dead. Let's magic missile the Vermlek to kind of help out in killing him. And you Make shoot the Evoker. Count. And you also shoot the Evoker without point blank shot. Now, in case you're wondering, I'm turning this off because what this does is it will force your archers to get 
into a range of 30 feet to benefit from the point blank shot feet, which is useful. But let's not forget that these weapons actually have a range of 50 feet. So you don't actually have to shoot from that close up. You can shoot from further away, although you do miss out on that bonus. In this case, I prefer to be safe, so... Uh, don't don't flame art me, you little bitch. I'm gonna swap targets. I'll magic missile the evoker. You're working on him, you as well. Die! Damn it. That's fine, that's fine. We took some damage, but not too bad. Dead. And dead. I must say, You've marched I really am liking this today. this uh, flying attack a lot. Everything really am, surprise. because you would not you would not be able to charge at the the Varmalek or whatever it's called uh, with the barbarians in front. Pretty nice. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, Seventy percent. Let's see back. if we can improve this by casting guidance. Still the same. Ah, because I already have the item that I gives me the bonus. Never mind. Am I not? Okay, pick up the loot. Pick up the loot. Move and aside. I kind of wanted to make a little bit more use out of my current buffs, but going around with fatigue is not really the best option, honestly. Okay, I guess I'll clear out this house as well. It's not that difficult. So, Mr. Big Bird, let's heal you up with a scroll of your light wounds. Good enough. And let's get in here. This house, as far as I remember, is not very difficult. Make way. What's that glitter? Ah, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, I won't go here yet. Or I, I, I should say. I'm gonna clear out the initial portion of the house, but I will I will not be going downstairs. Because I downstairs we have an optional this. enemy that can be a little bit annoying if you are not careful uh, and if you don't buff properly. So I want to be properly buffed and well rested to deal with him. So for right now, we're gonna avoid him. We picked up a book. Let's see if we can get some useful information out of it. Info and any other books I've picked up. Let me see. I wish I had something to tell me if the books have been read already or not. That would actually be a good mod to exist. I'll check if it exists. Okay, learned nothing new. All right, so let's get out of here. And I suppose I'll try to make some use of these buffs before resting much longer, uh, until we finish up the episode, I think. But yeah, so this house right here we have not done yet. I have to keep a, a mental note. I wish I could put a marker, but I cannot. What about here? Can I put a, a, a custom marker? No. Oh well. I'll try and remember. So here, or don't. we are going to be facing some annoying enemies, let's say. Uh, Lord Nature is on who? Nature 1, 1, 3, 9, uh, sorry, 7. We okay. will win this war. What's on your mind? I wonder. Guidance. Forget it. Yeah, okay, we failed. Uh, somebody ripped lumps of flesh from these dead bodies. Move I think if you pass the check, you get some hints as to what me. did this. But we're gonna find out very soon anyway. As you can see over here. I'm actually gonna hold position. I don't want to move uh, further ahead. Here we have ghouls. Muscles. Now, ghouls are not... You know, they're not especially uh, difficult enemies. But... They have a very annoying property. Well, first of all, they are undead, so you can actually hurt them with channel positive energy, such as this from a cleric, or heal spells, which we currently don't have available to us. But the main uh, problem with ghouls is... Let me see if I can find it. 
they can inflict paralysis. I think... Uh, uh, no, yeah. They can apply ghoul fever, which sucks already by itself, and they also inflict paralysis. And if they paralyze somebody, that somebody is essentially a free kill. So, I'm gonna try and have protective luck on Mr. Big Bird over here. Uh, and I guess I can tell you guys to no longer hold position, we're gonna start attacking. And I'm gonna keep a little bit back, I don't want to be face tanking them, I want Big Bird to do it. Let's let them come. Out of now we can way. go. <laughs> Did you see that? God damn it. Dude, how? Because you... <laughs> you see, this is what I say when there is always luck involved in this game. Big Bird has protective luck and the enemy just rolled 20 and a 20. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't beat uh, dice rolls. Basically right. is what I'm saying here. Thank you. Uh, I will still apply protective luck to Big Bird. Fine now, there we go. But yeah, thankfully Big Bird saved against the paralysis and also saved against the the ghoul fever, which is very very nice. Now let me see what I have in front of me to decide if I want to rest or not. I guess we can talk to this guy before we finish up the episode. Curl. A short hooded figure is poking about some bodies lying in the middle of the street. The stranger drags the first body off the road, respectfully props it up against the wall and places the corpse's hands on his chest. The figure then freezes as if hesitating and you see him reach out his hand toward the beautiful gold amulet hanging around the corpse's neck. He jerks his hand back, hesitates, then reaches out again. Well, well, look what we have here. Looting corpses, are we? What did you expect? Almost everyone is dead. The city now belongs to the demons and the vermin, rats, crows and creatures like this one. The stranger almost jumps out of his skin and the hood falls from his head. Under a mop of red curls, a round halfling face looks up at you. Oh, phew, I thought you were demons. G good day to you, good sir. Sila's eyebrows lift in apparent surprise. Curl, is that you? The halfling looks at Sila and smiles broadly. Oh, Lady Sila, you're alive! Goodness me, that's the second bit of good news on, the other on an otherwise lousy day. What was the first bit of good news? Stick around and see for yourself. Okay. Do you know this person, Sila? Meet Rimvi, better known as Curl. He hails from Canabras and he fights in the Condemned. He's one of a kind, a rogue with a heart of gold. Sila smiles and adds a little more seriously. Curl, it's probably none of my business, but you should ask yourself if what you were about to do is right. The halfling's cheeks flush and he hides his hands behind his back. I didn't... I just thought... Oh, it doesn't matter. Can you tell me anything useful about what's going on in the city? I'm afraid not, good sir. I just left the defender's heart. Before that, I was holed up in there, too scared to leave. Although spending all that time under Commander Irabet's nose sure was something. She's a strict one. <laughs> and when she gets antsy... So what are you doing here, robbing corpses? No, the halfling protests. Rimvi Curl may be a rogue, but he doesn't loot corpses. I just need to get these poor lads' bodies off the road. My friend and I are on a terribly important mission we need to get through. And now we see his friends. He is interrupted by the sound of wheels rolling on the paving stones. A cart drawn by a sad little horse appears from above around the corner. A pretty half-elf is driving it and a young man in knight's armor is walking alongside. Even from a distance you can see his tanned face and his blue eyes shining brightly. The halfling straightens up. See, a terribly important and very heroic mission. My friends and I are saving a beer cart from the demons. <laughs> Ellen of the Houndhearts. As he's speaking, the newcomers notice you, and the knight cries out in jubilation. Sila! I never thought I'd see you again! I thought you were headed to the main square, the center of the demon's attack. The half-elf smiles warmly at Sila. This is Janna Aldori. Janna Aldori? Hmm. Hey, friend. Glad to see you're all right. When we got separated by the crowd at the celebration, I knew right away that something was wrong. And when demons appeared all of a sudden, I realized that that was the reason why I'd been so anxious. But I couldn't find you among the dead in the square, so I kept my hopes up, and I was proved right. Sila's face lights up to joy. So you're the other bit of good news. Curl uh, was talking about. You and Janna are alive. Actually, by good news, I meant that we found the beer cart. <laughs> Sir Ellen and Janna being alive amounts to a quarter of a bit of good news. Well, maybe half. 
A beer cart? How about sharing with us? I'm sure you can all do it to drink. The half-elf winks wreckishly. Certainly. Give me your flask, friend. And if you walk with us to the Defender's Heart, we can have a more thorough sampling of the spoils there. Despite a cheerful tone, she looks at you with anxious hope. Jenna, there's no need. The heart is very close, and the three of us will be enough to fight off an attack if there is one. Besides, our friend here surely has better things to do. More important things than carrying barrels of beer, I wager. By the way, my name is Ellen, Sir Ellen of the Hound Hearts. I am glad to meet someone who survived this madness. You haven't told me how you know Scylla. I'll save that story till we're all back at the Defender's Heart. You're going back there, aren't you? We'll have a reason to toast our spoils. Are you, all right? Are you aware, Sir Knight, that your friend Curl was trying to rob a corpse? <laughs> Curl, that's not really necessary. Nah, it wasn't. Curl didn't even do anything. Whatever he might have been thinking, that's between him and his conscience. What's wrong with hearing the truth? I think Jana and I have the right to know what our newfound friend is up to. Ellen looks sternly at the cringing halfling. I am not your commander, Curl, and I can't punish you or even condemn you. I suppose lots of people in Mendev think that the war justifies anything. But think about it. That dead fellow might have a family somewhere. His property and mementos should be returned to their rightful owners. They're bound to have sentimental value. Take this card, for example. We might take it now, but once the city is free, the Eagle Watch and the other orders will certainly try to find the lawful owners and compensate them fairly for their losses. Uh huh. Enough, friend. I didn't even do anything. I was just thinking about it. And honestly, I don't think we'll even be able to gather up all the bodies and hand them over to the Eagle Watch. They'll be looted anyway. Well, that will be on the conscience of the one who does it. But you're a crusader, Curl, uh, though you might not have volunteered. Those who fight against evil itself have to be better than common folk with their moral frailties. Okay, I have to go. So long. We're sure to meet again, either in the city or the Defender's Heart. Sure you will. Come to the tavern, we'll celebrate the valiant rescue of this battle together. So yeah, shame on Curl trying to rob bodies. That's something that you should never ever do. It is very immoral and goes against the code of conduct of a righteous crusader. So, yeah, don't do it. Uh, and here we're gonna fight some more ghouls, which I guess we can save for when we have a rest. Okay, so let's kind of summarize here before we move to the next episode. Um, I'm... Oh! Jesus Christ. Don't I was unpaused. Sympathy. I thought I was paused and I got scared. I was trying to confirm if this place I was looking at was a dangerous location or not. And let's see if we remember... If we remember our past lessons. Okay? Because learning from our mistakes is very important. And I'm going to give a helpful hint here. You remember this music? You remember me telling you about this music when we found the water elemental back in the maze? It means trouble, danger, death. So be aware of this area, and I will do it uh, in the next episode, don't worry. But I guess, I guess we're gonna have a rest before. Or if I had enough... No, no, no. We're gonna have a rest before, I think. Don't know? No don't reason. Unless I really had a lot of... Well, maybe I do have some spells to deal with him before uh, having to rest. Eh, okay. Maybe I will do that guy before we rest. We'll see. But we do have to go there soon for an optional enemy that also has some, some nice loot before him, I believe. And then we're going to continue out and uh, explore the rest of the market square. With that, my friends, this will be the end of this episode. As always, I want to thank you all for being here with me in the channel, watching some Pathfinder Right for the Righteous. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Questions, suggestions, anything at all, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. Many more videos coming out soon. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.